Hey Adventure Seekers, day 3 in Mount Gambier and we have got a lot of excitement lined up. I'm Virzi Rover, your go-to explorer, rain or shine, we are on the road. Today's agenda, buckle up because we are diving into so many good places. Oh and weather? Well, let's just say it's doing its own thing, but guess what? Rain or rain, in, we are unstoppable. Can't even break an egg properly. Yeah, I think the carrots are the best. What if there is a chicken fat and a junk fat? <laughs> so it's raining outside today, and I don't know if we would be able to go out and see any places, but at least I have a good breakfast today, and I'm happy about it. Ready to go? Day three. <laughs> It's still cloudy. I'm not sure we'll be able to see anything. Let's try our luck. I'm at the cave garden, which is in the heart of the city. Walking through, I felt like I've stumbled upon a hidden treasure. It was a fairy tale. The beautiful misty weather was legit adding it to it. This place has a really cozy vibe. Uh, it reminds me of a place in India that is Masuri. That place is lit, especially when it's raining. Both spots share a serene charm and a connection to nature that's truly special. So let's enjoy the wonder of Cape Garden. just hanging around and absorbing the beauty of this place that suddenly started raining like too heavily within like two seconds <laughs> we were about to get drenched of course we are talking about Australian weather the land of surprises guys <laughs> We stopped again at this beautiful blue lake uh, because of the rain it is so misty I clicked few pictures and made a few videos spent some time and it's sunny now I'm happy let's run to the another spot quickly so that we don't lose the sunlight what are you doing I think he's cleaning the car what Rugged coastline, crashing waves, and the southern ocean spreading out before us. Port McDonald is like nature's grand stage where the ocean takes the lead role. This beach boat jetty is one of the longest jetties in South Australia and this beauty always comes into its own in summer. With nearly 1.5 kilometers of original 1882 structure still intact. Currently it is going under maintenance like it has a limited access but you can take a stroll and enjoy the beauty. The swing in the ocean and I just want I wish I could play that on YouTube. I will try to. And I am missing one of my closest friends from the year. Because last time when I went to her place, we were we spent like many evenings sitting on the swing. 
If you are planning for a beach boat, do give it a nice research because this place has a lot to offer. You can stay here for a week or you can come here for a day tour. We have reached to the point and this is Cape Northumberland Lighthouse, but there are rooms. Let's check it out. Oh my god, this looks crazily awesome. Little did I know, I was about to become the Wayne's dance partner. <laughs> We're talking wind speeds that could make Superman's gate jealous. A solid 60 kilometers per hour or something. It was like Mother Nature decided I need a quick oxy tango tutorial. There I am attempting to stand tall and the wind's like, not today mate. It felt less like sightseeing or more like a windy comedy show. With yours truly, as the unintentional star. This rune of lighthouse was built in 1858. It has been demolished and a new lighthouse has been built in 1882, which is under the local authorities and is not open for public. This location is known for scenic rock formations which resemble a rhino, crocodile, frog, camel, lobsters. The map of Australia Reef can also be seen from here. This lighthouse is just so amazing. The uninterrupted view of sunset and sunrise. Right, we are standing at the southernmost point of South Australia. We are at the literal edge of the map. It's like being on the edge of the world with nothing but the wind, waves, and the whispers of seafaring adventures. Okay, I couldn't control my camera, my body, so I have to just come back. I don't like losing the control of the body. So this is another heaven, right? It's heaven. Here I am battling the wind trying not to be the next YouTube sensation for all the wrong reasons. My god, we sat in the car and the car was legit shaking. I'm scared. I've never been into the situation ever before. And I think we should just haste to go back. We decided to go further ahead. It was like five minutes drive to reach to the finger point. And trust me, the finger point is like finding a secret cub house in the middle of nowhere. It's so hidden that even the GPS was like, are you sure about this? Just a bit down to the road, Carpenter Rocks is a tiny town that got the perfect postcard thing going on. Let's go. Are you out there to kill me too? Absolutely not. Yeah. Why would I agree to that on video? It has one single tooth, just like one. We did running towards the car because it started raining. Yeah, there are only four to five houses. That's all. Uh, 
the ocean is getting much scarier than I thought. I think the storm is coming or something and we should just go back. Adventurous you and me. trying to find uh, some general store over here because we forgot to bring the spoon we did pack our lunch but spoon we forgot so let's see if we can find this this place is a store right here there are only few houses uh, and I think we are lucky that at least there is one shop which is open I guess yeah let's go this general store was so tiny that even a kangaroo's pouch seems bigger than this. <laughs> but the lady at the store gave us a couple of spoons for our lunch on the house. Yeah! The petrol pump, it was like a mission to break the record for the world's smallest fueling station. Now, the carpenter rocks, let me tell you, was the David among Goliaths when it came to the Oxy towns. It was like a dot on the map that blinked twice and said, yep, I'm a town. I was half tempted to pitch a tent and call the place home, of course, pending a month's approval. So we reached to this Cape Bank lighthouse. It feels like it's totally abandoned area. No one ever come here. Yeah. After leaving Carpenter Rocks, the mainly dirt road, sections of road may not be accessible to non four wheel drive in wet weather and particularly to this section up to the bright orange lighthouse can be quite smooth and slippery. The views from the lighthouse are spectacular, particularly from the platform which also had many information plaques attached to it. They have got a camping ground and for those brave enough to camp under the stars, here's a heads up, it's off the grid. So pack those extra torches and ensure your gadgets are fully charged because in this heaven, it's just you, stars, and the egos of history. And it's raining again. Oxy weather doing its thing, keeping us guessing. It's like mini weather surprise party, ready or not. Rain, here we come. <laughs> Let's keep rolling and see what else nature has up its sleeve. After having a fun at the seashore, uh, we decided to take uh, one and a half hour of drive to Narakot Caves. We were running late for the caves because the caves closes at 5. But we were feeling adventurous, so fingers crossed. Now, don't ask me why didn't we hit the caves in the morning. Aman even mentioned it, but I guess I was in my own little world at the time. So jacket is on already. I don't want to get sick. It's pretty windy and cold. So we have reached to this point. Uh, I hope you know, um, we allow us to 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 going to be a horror show or something <laughs> firstly we visited this visitor center which was free for us fortunately but it cost ten dollars for people who come here it is a recreation of the rainforest that covered this area about 200,000 years ago at this Wanabi fossil center theater and science come together to provide a glimpse of Asian Narakut here, you can step back in time and find out what Narakut looked like over 200,000 years ago. Paleontologists have also been studying these caves for over 30 years now. Do you know there were 20 kangaroo species living in the area 200,000 years ago, but now there are just four. I'm sure you're gonna enjoy the fossil display and the life-sized models of the extinct animals in all their glory here. Oh my god, yes. I love my present world. I never want to be. 
so as usual we are late to this place but at least we'll be able to see one of the cave we have already paid for it this cave is stick to marrow cave why do we call it this is my robot stuff and then someone went to find his own demero and then found the cave this is a small cafe here as well so the price we paid is how much yeah 22 to 23 dollars for two people okay so this is the entrance and yes we got the ticket definitely says ticketed entry so this was the only cave you can visit without a guide rest of the caves you definitely need a guided tour and hence we miss them the stick tamaro cave is an easy self guided walk with an automated light system there are two chambers to discover and they are pretty amazing the first chamber has lovely natural light filtering through and the second is the dark and misty look at the structures straight out of some As we stepped into the cave it got kind of dark and like it creepy the echoes of our steps made it feel like a mysterious place the real talk is if tight spaces make you feel uncomfortable this might not be your thing the cave has some narrow spots and if you are not up for it you do not need to take chances safety first back to civilization <laughs> these nara kot caves are world heritage listed and one of the world's most important fossil sites there are 28 caves in the national park and four are open for public there are other facilities which has cafe barbecue picnic tables camping ground and the large car parks which is suitable for buses caravans and motor homes This is the Blanche Cave, which we missed. Actually, we missed a lot of caves here. Uh, this is just a lookout point. I don't know. So this place also offer a walking trails where you can explore the above ground world and learn more about the world heritage features of the park. So this is the wrap up of day 3 in Mount Gambier. So whether you are a weather warrior, a cave enthusiast or simply along for the ride, thank you for joining me on this exploration. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe for more adventures and share your thoughts in the comments below. Ta-da! Keep traveling.